You know that feeling, the itch of wanting more, of being boxed in and watching as others break free from the nine to five curse, and you're wondering, why not me? You got the ambition, the drive, the vision, but the thought of starting from zero is daunting. The sleepless nights, the uncertainty, the fear of failure, but what if there was a way to bypass all of those initial challenges? A way of stepping into a business that's already built and just waiting for the right touch and giving you the ability to dive straight into growth and scaling. If you wanna learn all about this, stick around as I'm going to unveil the step-by-step -step guide to find already established businesses just waiting to be bought. The first thing you need to do is set clear objectives and specific criteria about what you are actually going to acquire. You need to know what you're looking for so that you can build a plan. You wanna target specific industries. You wanna find the right revenue, the cash flow range, the geographic location. A lot of the great deals I'm looking at right now are something that falls under the category of a boring business. These are businesses that are essential like HVAC, electrical companies, plumbing, pest control, landscaping. There are many just like it that provide essential services on a day-to-day -day basis. Having a clear vision will streamline your search and make it 10 times easier to actually source a workable deal. Now, a lot of people struggle with how do they figure out exactly what they should go after. This is not something that you're gonna know from day one, most likely. If you're like me, I started my search with an idea of what I wanted in cash flow, and then I filtered it through and see what businesses fit that cash flow range. Once I then had a group of businesses I was interested in, then I went down between each one, research and see which industries I wanted to be a part of. For you, as you're going through this process, the best thing to decide is to what level of cash flow do I want post acquisition? Now we're gonna figure out what that number is. So now we're able to reverse engineer how large of a deal that you need to go after to get that. But now leaves the question of what type of business. I would want you, as you go throughout this process, unless you have a specific idea or a specific goal in mind relating to a specific type of business, I want you to be agnostic about about exactly the type of industry. The way that I want you to go about this, I want you to look at all these businesses through the lens of three different factors. The first factor is, is it recession resistant? You wanna focus on businesses that even during a recession, people are going to be spending their money on. So the first lens is, is it recession resistant? A great example of this would be an accounting firm. People still need to do their taxes, even when there's a recession, or an HVAC company. People still gonna want their AC to work in their house if there is a recession. That is the line of thinking. The second item to look through is recurring revenue. We want as much of the revenue as possible to be recurring. Well, recurring revenue means that the one customer you bring on is gonna be paying you again and again and again. That could be yearly, that could be monthly, that could be quarterly, but once you bring on one customer, they're gonna to continue to pay you down the road. This makes your business much more valuable. It also makes your business much easier to scale. So we want recession resistance, we want recurring revenue, and the last one we want is a barrier to entry. Now, with a barrier to entry, this can also be called a moat around your business. An example of a business that has a moat would be an HVAC company. To, not everyone can start an HVAC company. In many of the states in the United States, you need to have a license to open up an HVAC company, right? So you wanna find a business that has some type of competitive advantage. It may not be a license, it might be the size. For instance, a landscaping company. It's very easy to start a landscaping company, but it's very hard to have a landscaping company be able to take on a project like an HOA that has 300 homes. There's only a certain amount of landscaping companies that could even do that work. So that is a barrier because you have to be of a certain size to be a competitor, right? So it takes time to get to that point. Focus on something that gives you a competitive advantage. The lens we're looking at at all these different industries, once we figured out our cash flow and what we want, we then take the lens of recession resistance, recurring revenue, and barrier to entry. And we put those goggles on and we look at all the different opportunities that are before us that hit our cash flow metrics. And you'll start to see the ones that fit those lenses and also make the amount of cash flow that you're looking for. Okay, so now that we've set the clear objectives and the specific criteria, and we know what we're looking for, we know the size, everything that we talked about before, now it's time to find the actual business. So now I'm gonna walk you through a variety of methods, and I'll let you know which ones are my favorite and which ones are not my favorite. The first thing you're gonna do is leverage your network. Before you start searching through different online platforms, 
Sometimes the best opportunities come from your personal connection. Start by telling your friends and your family what you're planning on doing. Hey, I am gonna go out and buy an HVAC company in Orlando, Florida, and this is why I'm doing it, and this is what I'm looking for. Well, guess what? Someone in your family or your friend group might have a friend or a, a someone they know that owns an HVAC company and maybe on the verge of retiring, and guess what? They can connect you to them. That type of referral is way more powerful, has usually has such better outcomes than trying to do something from cold or something from even having a broker attached to it. So start with your own personal network, reaching out to see what opportunities could be in the space that you're already in. Outside of your friends and family, let your colleagues know, mentors, alumni from your school, anything that you can imagine in your terms of your broad network. Tell them what you're doing, tell them what you are looking for, and I promise you, you're gonna to start to get some referrals coming your way. The next one is utilize online platforms. There are several online marketplaces where businesses are listed for sale. My favorite are bizbysell.com and withkumo.com. Both of these sites are the best when it comes to having updates regularly. On bizbysell.com, you're having brokers list their, their listings from all, of the, all across the United States and they have a pretty good user interface. And then with withkumo, it's a paid service, but it's only about $30 a month, and you're able to aggregate all the searches from Biz by Sell and the other 100 websites out there that have businesses, and it takes them, pulls them into one place so you can do a search, and you can see everything that's across the internet for sale. It saves me a bunch of time. I love using them. They have a great team and a great product. Before we go too much further, I'm actually going to show you exactly how I use these platforms to search for deals. So here is bizbysell.com. And when you get to bizbysell.com, you have the front page right here. We're gonna click on our state that I currently live in and I'm gonna choose service businesses as a way of what we're searching for. Click on that. And the next thing I want you guys to focus on is the top bar where you have all of the different metrics you can choose. I always go to more filters. I always go to cash flow, and I put a minimum of 500K because that's when I'm interested in my current deal size. Hit apply. Next thing I'm gonna do is look at price. I wanna make sure I'm looking at businesses that have under a 4 price tag. So 4x on cash flow, 4 times 500k. The max price range then is going to be 2 million. Apply. And here's all the businesses in Florida that fall under the service category that are under 2 million but making over 500k a year in cash flow. Now let's go down and choose one that we like. Here we go. 10% down because it's SBA pre-qualified and it is a landscaping company that is doing over 3 million in revenue, which means the it's a large landscaping company. It has some barriers to entry to it. It's been around for nearly 40 years, it's saying right here in the listing, or two decades, so it's been around for 20 years. And it is 10 employees, the owner wants to retire, and that is music to my ears. Next thing you do if you're interested in this listing is you would go and you would call Dimitri, who's representing this as the broker. That is how you, within a minute, can find a deal on Biz Buy Sell that meets your parameters. Now let's go over to withkumo.com. So withkumo.com, again, I said is a paid source. It's about $30 a month. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to sign up through my link. You guys get a little bit of a discount by doing that. So we'll click on the login and we go right here and you see this is an aggregate. So this is pulling listings from Biz Buy Sell and every other brokerage website in existence and it puts them in one spot. It makes it very easy to save time when you are doing your research. So EBITDA, we want the max or actually the minimum to be 500k and max a million. And then we're going to go to the price and we're going to say max 2 million. And here's all the businesses that are there. Now, the cool thing about with Kumo is you can click on industry and it's so granular that you can get into. Look at all the different industries that they have here. So for the purpose of this, I'm going to click on nail salon, click on that. And I see that right here, you can see the listing that I just looked at. This is a $1.99999 million dollar asking price nail salon, almost making about a million bucks a year in California. Great margins. Owner is willing to stay on, has a full management team in place, includes all the furniture fixtures and equipment. This seems like a great deal. So next thing I'm going to click on is the view. This is going to take me to the original listing and I'm going to see here where I can contact the broker. And that's it guys. That's how easy it is to use some of these platforms to find a deal in which to go after. Sometimes the best way to break into business buying is by directly reaching out. And that could be direct by walking into a business, cold calling, or cold emailing. We utilize all of them to get as many deals in our pipeline as possible. Now, if there's a specific type of business that you're looking in and that you're interested in acquiring, this is one of the best ways. So you're going to create a list and there's many ways to do this. Some of the ways that we do it here at Acquisition A's is through PPP data, through LinkedIn, through sites like Apollo and other lead scrapers. And we're able to do that 
in a way in which we aggregate a large list. We then write specific scripts that go after those specific industries that are written from a very personal perspective from the buyer to the seller. So I would say, hey, my name is Ben. I have a wife. I have three kids, two dogs, and I want to buy your HVAC company because of A, B, and C reasons. We then send that out in mass to all of these businesses that fit that criteria, and we wait for those replies to come back. Now, you're going to get a bunch of rejections. You're going to be sending out a thousand messages, and maybe you're going to get about a hundred that respond back. And out of the hundred that respond back, you maybe will get about 15 to 20 of them who will actually want to jump on a call with you. And out of that 15 to 20 that jump on a call with you, you might have one or two that turn into a deal. But this is something that we do constantly. There are constantly deals that are coming through our pipeline. And this is one of the great ways to be able to get a deal done at better terms with creative financing because it's just you and the seller. There's no broker. There's no one else involved. And you're able to really be able to make great deals with that type of dynamic. Some other ways that are not as good as direct outreach or utilizing online listings is industry publications and associations. These are things where you can join these different types of groups. You network within them. The good thing about them is that by networking in these types of areas, you're able to find out when people in certain industries are retiring or they're looking to put their business on the market. Sometimes they will tell their colleagues in these types of industries so that word gets around to where potentially you might be able to hear about a deal that's coming on the market and head it off before it's actually made with a broker. Trade magazines, industry reports, association newsletters. Sometimes these also will have businesses up for sale. Although this is something that is very much being phased out, these things still do exist and sometimes there are good deals to be found on them. Trade shows and conferences is another way. Now, these events can be gold and they're gold in the sense where you're networking with other like-minded individuals. I don't necessarily find deals in these markets. What I do find is potential partners and investors. And then I'm able to build up that area of my war chest to be able to go and find even more deals by direct outreach or through online listings with brokers. And then I utilize these events to build up the network I have to be able to get these deals done. So they are gold, but they're gold for the networking aspect. I usually don't find great deals or people talking about deals that they're selling at these types of conferences. And remember, finding the right business to acquire is a mix of strategy, diligence, and a bit of luck. You are not going to get it done on the first few attempts. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes motivation, and if you stay on the path, you will get a deal done. It takes persistence, continuous refinement of your approach to finally find that business that hits your metrics that is going to make a difference in your financial future. Now that you got the map, the tools, and the strategy to find those businesses that are ripe for the taking, you should no longer have those sleepless nights thinking about the what ifs or feeling paralyzed by overwhelming choices or the fear of the unknown. You have a clear plan. You literally have no excuses now. You know exactly how to move forward in order to make this a reality. Now, if you're serious and you want to take action now, follow these steps and get to work. The path to acquisition and leaving that nine to five is literally right in front of you. It's going to take effort. It's going to take hard work, but it is right there and you can do it. All you need to do is to take those steps and start down that path. Now, if you're going to take this seriously, then watch the video on the screen about how to transition from employee to entrepreneur and how to take back ownership of your time. And if you want the next steps for this transition, I have an accelerated program that will walk you through every single step I took along with 150 other successful students right now that are acquiring cash flowing businesses in less than six months. They are changing their lives one step at a time. Click the link in the description below to find out more. See you all in the next one.